Hi, my name is Justin Gray. I'm a mix and mastering engineer and music producer based here in Toronto, Canada. Um, this is my studio, Synthesis Sound and Immersive Mastering. If you'd like to keep in touch or check out more of my work or the artists I work with, please check the websites in the information below. And please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to get more content like this, um, especially on this topic. Today I'm going to share with you an introduction to immersive audio music production, specifically the Dolby Atmos music format and how it, what it does for music production and what it can do for your music. Um, it is essential for this video that you listen to the musical examples using headphones. I'm going to use these big mastering headphones because ultimately uh, when I'm producing in this immersive audio format, I'm using uh, a multi-channel speaker array that has been specifically tuned uh, to the Dolby s standard. Um, but, as I'm going to explain to you as this video goes on, we can experience this immersive audio format all the way down uh, to stereo headphones, which is what is so exciting about it. That said, the way that I'm going to be delivering this to you in this video requires headphones. It's not one of those things where I'm suggesting headphones. Um, it actually just won't work uh, without listening to headphones, including speakers. Um, and I'll explain a bit more about this. So headphones on, please. Let's listen to a little something, and then I'll uh, explain a little more about it. So, I'm hoping that what you were experiencing there is uh, exciting, and you were experiencing some instruments, uh, specifically one instrument, I'll explain all, all the details as we go on, but, but actually sort of flying around your head a little bit. Um, let's briefly just touch on a couple of things as to what is Dolby Atmos music, what is, what is immersive audio. Um, in general, we are used to these days listening to stereo audio two channels, left and right, uh, whether that's on headphones, whether that's on speakers. Now, in the film world, the idea of listening to surround audio or surround sound uh, in either a 5.1 or 7.1 format has been you know, common for quite some time. And actually, the Dolby Atmos or um, uh, you know, uh, IMAX experience, etc., have been using even larger speaker arrays for film for also quite some time. What has changed in the Dolby Atmos world is where previously a 5.1 setup, which required five speakers plus one LFE, or low frequency effects channel, or a 7.1, it's 9.1, etc., it required that a listener be in an environment with that many speakers for accurate playback. Uh, there were ways of listening to it on headphones with fold downs where you're you know, combining channels and doing your best to, to uh, amalgamate all of those signals. What is different about Dolby Atmos is that, in a nutshell, the Dolby Atmos music format um, is a sphere. You can see it as, this, as, as, a, as a digital sphere of information. And so, although I am mixing in the studio, and let me, let me show you, uh, you know, what the speaker array, array in my room is. Uh, it should be right here. So as you can see, I've got four height channels. Um, I've got four height channels here. I've got seven speakers, which are my bed, seven one bed. And then here and here behind the desk, um, you, you can see that there are two subs actually. I mean, in my stereo mastering work, I use them as extension speakers, um, but I amalgamate them into one uh, combined LFE channel. So hence seven one, and four. That's what 714 means. So when I'm producing 
Dolby Atmos music and music in this in this immersive con in this immersive format, uh, I am, you know, not listening on headphones most of the time. I'm producing in this environment. What is amazing about Dolby Atmos, however, is that that sphere is not proprietary to this amount of speakers. This is the standard amount of speakers for a production studio like my own, which is up to the Dolby spec to be able to deliver all the way up to to Netflix content at a at a world class level. But the format, from a listener standpoint and from a an end user standpoint, um, that sphere, which is you know in, encoded into a, a specific type of audio file, is then dispersed to whatever is available at, in that given system. So if you have five speakers, if you have seven speakers, if you have two speakers, or if you just have headphones, the the Dolby Atmos technology then takes what I have created here and distributes it to whatever's available. So what has got me particularly excited about this format and, and a couple of years ago when I started down the road of getting my studio uh, up to spec to be able to produce in this format um, and, and deliver in this format is the idea that it's no longer limited to end users who have multi-channel systems. Yes, if you have a multi-channel system, it's all that much more exciting. However, I think hopefully what this video and videos that I'm going to keep, continue to produce, um, as well as just the content that you start to see coming into the world, will show you is that the headphone experience, which is obviously the simplest and the most accessible ex experience um, available to the majority of listeners, that the headphone experience is actually quite impressive and quite magical. And, and, and a really unique um, opportunity to create an entirely new world of experiencing audio. So let me go back into some more musical examples. Let's calibrate ourselves to some sound. I'm, uh, I just want to let you know about what you're listening to briefly here. Um, so I'm pulling up uh, a Pro Tools session. This is actually my own music. I'm producing, uh, remixing and mastering um, my own record, which is uh, by a band, Justin Gray and Synthesis, and the the album New Horizons, which is available on all streaming platforms in its stereo format, um, involves an instrument I play called the bass vena, uh, my ensemble, and uh, some artists from around the world, specifically uh, North and South Indian uh, classical musicians. This particular moment on this particular song, New Horizons, is a is a drum solo or a tabla solo. The tabla is a North Indian percussion instrument um, that's being accompanied by an instrument called the sarangi. Now, the sarangi is a beautiful, beautiful bowed uh, stringed instrument from India. So you're going to hear that. Um, now, again, when you listen to this example, I want you to focus on the idea that the tabla are, are actually up higher in your listening experience than usual and that the sarangi is moving around us. I'm going to put up the, the immersive audio stereo version, and we're going to listen to that, and then I'm going to play the stereo version for you. We'll go back and forth a couple of times. Um, so actually what I'm going to show you is this screen here, which is the Dolby Atmos renderer. This is where all of the object, the objects are the things that are placed in the space in the, in the Dolby Atmos world. Uh, you're going to see all these little spheres uh, moving around the screen, and this is what uh, is processing that information. So Quickly put this into a simple stereo fold down. Give me a second. Same musical example without the immersive audio quality.
back one more time. I'm going to provide the the immersive quality again. Here we go. Let's check out this uh, slightly denser section once the drums come in again in stereo. And what I mean by stereo is um, that I'm, I'm removing the immersive quality, uh, and I'll explain how this is happening in a second. <laughs> back into the immersive quality that, that the Atmos mix is bringing to it. What you're experiencing when we come into all of these objects which you're seeing on that screen come to life and, and move around is the potential of Dolby Atmos. Now, uh, you have to trust me at the moment when I say that experiencing this in its full speaker array is even that much more impressive. The, sim the same as going to a movie theater and seeing a, a really, you know, uh, a, sort of a epic cinematic film that has been uh, ha is using this immersive audio um, for moving objects all around the place and having you know airplanes fly overhead and and things come from behind you and in front. I mean, this is where this technology originated, but over the last couple of years, Dolby has has basically opened up the door for music production to exist. And you've probably heard about it before. Um, the challenge has been actually experiencing it. And I think as well, the challenge is just understanding its potential. So that's my goal with this video and the videos to come. There are plenty of tutorials on how to do it for music producers. I'm more interested in, in you know, connecting with artists who want to make your music in this format and understanding where its potential is and how we can get it out to the world uh, because I believe that it has the opportunity to engage our listeners in, in, in this new way in the way that if someone as simple as wearing you know a, a pair of airpods or or a pair of headphones can can be given this this immensely you know this deep immersive experience now let's discuss briefly you know how is this happening why how what is the difference that that i was showing you between the stereo and what i was referring to as the immersive version uh, now i'm going to get into a little bit of tech um, but i do think that it's necessary to understand as I explained, um, the idea of Dolby Atmos is, is this, this mix is contained in what I'm going to describe as a sphere, or as you're seeing over on this screen as this, this, um, this, this, this 3D space, this box. It looks like a little personal movie theater down here. Um, when that is put into a stereo format, eventually the idea is that no matter whether I'm listening on headphones or speakers, it will automatically fold to that. Now, in this particular moment in time, for you watching this on your phones or watching this on your computer or whatever you happen to be, you know, probably one of those two things, realistically, um, 
the the way for you to experience the immersive version of this mix um, is still somewhat limited. Now, this is this is evolving uh, by the day, to the degree that it is possible with a pair of AirPod Pros and a and an and an Apple iPhone that has iOS 14 or above to use Apple's proprietary spatial audio format to decode a Dolby Atmos mix um, and experience Dolby Atmos on, on headphones. Now, the issue there is that spatial audio is still in the development process for really being able to more accurately depict the Dolby Atmos uh, render. And the issue is that it's really currently linked only to AV content. So if you're watching Apple TV Plus or Amazon TV, uh, Amazon Prime Television on your device, your iOS device, not a computer, but an iOS device, you can experience a Dolby Atmos mix being being uh, dispersed to your headphones. And it's very, very, it's, it's amazing. It really is. Um, specifically, their Apple's own AirPod Pros or the AirPod Maxes have been auth- have been basically given the ability to to communicate with the phone and do this um, decoding process of taking a Dolby Atmos mix and and you know putting it into headphones. How am I making this work for any headphone? Because I didn't specify that you need to wear any headphone. You you can be wearing any pair of headphones right now. I am doing this with what's called binaural audio. Now binaural audio has been around for some time. Binaural recording was the process of using a binaural binaural dummy head it looks like a like almost like a rubber rubber head with microphones placed in you know fake ear canals and when re- when the recordings were made um, this technology was meant to have the ultimate recording when listened to on headphones and headphones only I'll explain in a second um, basically it it tricks the brain into experiencing the world the way that we actually experience it because our ear canals and our ears and the shapes of our ears and where our eardrums are situated, this all plays a huge role in how we spatialize our environment around us and how we experience the world through sound. When we listen to music on headphones, you know, uh, your normal stereo music, left, right, left channel, right channel, we're actually getting a f- uh, an unrealistic uh, experience in the sense that we have discrete left and discrete right only left and left and only right and right. Now, this can create actually very surreal and fantastic music. And I'm not saying that stereo music is not incredible and has not reached uh, inspiring heights. That said, the potential, I'm hoping that you already heard it, and I'm hoping that as I play some more for you, you will continue to hear this, is that the potential of this immersive quality of, of basically using using technology and trickery to get the brain to experience this 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 whole sphere around us this 3D world is quite inspiring it's been used in video games already it's been used in film already and now it's here for music so how i'm doing this for you right now is in the dolby atmos renderer which yeah i'm looking at it um there are all sorts of fold downs and what that means is if i'm starting at a 12 speaker system which again if we look at my uh my screen here I showed you I've got a 12 speaker system four height channels seven beds one LFE channel Um, the fold downs are then minimizing those speaker channels into 5171 2.0 which would be stereo or a binaural fold down so binaural audio, I have explained the recording process, but the idea of uh, this technology and, and creating binaural mixes has been around for some time, and it's actually been a, an excellent standard for 3D audio delivery. Um, it's used in, in video games. It's used in sort of other spatialized worlds. Uh, at this particular moment, the only way that I can deliver my Dolby Atmos mix to you and you can hear it on any device with any set of headphones is to deliver the binaural fold down to you. And so you're actually hearing uh, post-processing of the Dolby Atmos renderer 
my binaural fold down of this immersive world. And again, this is the cool thing about the Dolby Atmos uh, ecosystem is that eventually, once we upload our music to Apple, uh, sorry, Tidal HD or Amazon HD, which are the two services that support uh, Dolby Atmos files right now, eventually, we're going to be able to take our Samsung device or our Apple device or hopefully a whole other slew of devices, press play on that file, and it's automatically going to decode perfectly to whatever we're listening on. That is coming. It's, it's not there yet, but it's, uh, it's happening, and it's happening quickly. Um, all of these devices, Samsung is actually sort of leading the way. Apple's very, very close, uh, but doing their own thing with, with spatial audio. So they're, they're, there's a little bit of uh, aligning the two in, in my personal experience that is necessary to really bring it to, to its height. But what I'm doing for you right now, delivering a binaural mix, is actually the most accurate headphone representation of this immersive audio um, uh, mix that is possible at this moment. Over time, eventually, I'm looking forward to when it doesn't have to be binaural, uh, and it can just be a Dolby Atmos music file, and then your respective device is telling your headphones, or sorry, your respective device is, is going to play back the most appropriate version of that sphere automatically. Uh, this is still not quite there. The technology is is getting there, but what is what is amazing is that it already exists in, in specific ecosystems and the big players like Apple and Samsung, everybody's on board for this. It's already built into their devices. It's already on two streaming platforms. So very, very soon um, we're going to see, you know, sort of by the year, if not hopefully, you know, shorter periods of time, uh, massive improvements in, in terms of the ease of delivery, delivery to the uh, end user. So anyways... For right now, I'm giving you the binaural fold down so that you can have the most accurate representation. Before we close this, let's do some more listening. Let's do a little bit more comparison. Um, I'm going to go still to this particular end section just because this instrument is sort of flying around. And I once again, I want you, I want you to listen to the whole thing. I'm going I'm to put it into stereo since we got fresh ears. So. I'm taking off the binaural, now that you understand that concept, I'm taking off the binaural processing and just putting out the, the st straight stereo fold down. This is still a, an Atmos mix that is being folded down into discrete left and right. So this, this for instance, if you, if you really wanted, right now you could listen on speakers, but it would sound like a, a stereo mix. It's a little bit different when it's coming from an Atmos file. I actually think it sounds... Sounds rather good coming from an Atmos file, but, but it's not the immersive quality that the next example will have. So here we go. Pay attention to the height of the tablas, the drums. Pay attention to the idea that the sarangi, the bowed instrument, is moving between left and right on this sort of horizontal plane like this. The tablas sit here, the instruments move this way. Now, I'm going to turn on the binaural rendering. And let's have a listen. Notice the height of the tablas coming up in your listening experience and the idea that now the sarangi is moving in this circular motion rather than this horizontal motion. Also provides depth throughout the mix.
So, just the last half of the tune. Uh, the videos to come, I'm going to explore more of this song and other songs from the record, as well as, you know, as time goes on, uh, I have about four uh, albums that are all being worked on in this format right now, all getting ready to be released uh, to, again, Tidal and, and Amazon HD, and then being ready for what I think is uh, an immersive audio revolution that, that is, is on the horizon and, and bringing 3D audio, bringing immersive audio to everybody, everybody with all the way from headphone users to audio files with big systems. This access, this, this access is the key and, and what gets me particularly excited about wanting to, to engage artists and engage creators in thinking about this format. So, you know, looking forward to connecting and, and hopefully you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the ones to come as well. Look forward to sharing music with you and uh, would love to work together on it. I, I think that there's, there's so much potential here and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. So just a quick uh, shout out to a couple of things here is uh, the speakers that, that, you know, in the studio are all uh, by Lipinski Audio. And Lipinski's a, you know, sort of a mastering speaker out of um, uh, out of Europe that uh, out of Poland specifically that that I just absolutely adore um, this whole system is a Pro Tools HD rig I'm really honored to work with um, companies like radial engineering who have, have helped to wire this this uh, as well as um, you know Rapco and and lava cable um, who've just you know make make the studio possible um you can learn a bit more about the studio and and uh and how it's all built on the website so please check that out and just the musicians that you were listening to there um we're again justin gray and synthesis so i was playing the uh, the bass instrument which is called the bass vena the sarangi player is druba ghosh unfortunately passed away shortly after that recording was done um tabla is ed hanley Drums, Derek Gray, my brother. Guitar, Ted Quinlan. And the strings are the Venuti String Quartet. So I'll put some links in the, uh, in the, you know, com in the uh, information below. Please do subscribe to the channel. I look forward to sharing more with you and have a, have a lovely day.